Right, welcome back. And uh, you're still watching Morning Cafe. The hashtag as well is, is Morning Cafe. Right now, time to get into some uh, higher learning uh, kind of uh, discussion. And uh, we're pri privileged to have uh, the CEO of uh, KMTC, Dr. Kelly Oldwatch. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? I'm fantastic. Hope the rains have been kind to you this morning. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. So before we begin, so last week, uh, the Health Government Secretary, Susan Akumicha, launched the KMTC Strategic Plan 2023-2028. Let's listen in to uh, what she was talking about, briefly an overview of it, before we actually continue to get to know uh, the whole journey of KMTC since it was established until now. I am going to ensure that people do not encroach on your core business. Let people concentrate on what they are supposed to be doing. Training be left to KMTC. I'm going to ensure that happens. In our collective commitment to ensure that KMTC continues to be a beacon of excellence in medical education and healthcare advancement, I will do what it takes. I know there have been questions about the KMTCs that are not yet operational, but uh, as a policy direction, we have decided we shall operationalize the many that were built and they are not operational before we get into new ones. Well, that is just a snippet of health here. Susan Akwich is speaking uh, on Thursday, that is uh, last week. And uh, uh, Dr. Adri, she mentions uh, two major things, mm -hmm. the whole operationalization of KMTC mm -hmm. and, uh, well, how she really... Uh, came to see should be left on matters training, but we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. But even as this strategic plan focuses on 2023 to 2028, I mean, we're focusing on the future. But what's the future without now taking a look at the past? Take us a memory down uh, back in 1927, which is established. Walk okay. us through the journey. Okay, thank you so much. On Thursday last week, uh, KMTC launched two important documents. One is the history of KMTC, the journey to greatness, and two, the strategic plan, and number three, uh, the curricula for international languages. Uh, about the journey to greatness, KMTC was established in 1927 in the then Jean School, the current uh, School of Government in Kabete. It later moved to um, King George IV Hospital, that time it was along the Kingsway, that is the current um, university way, then moved to current Kenyatta Hospital. At that point in time, uh, there were only four students and uh, the training was concentrated on wound dressing because it was around World War I yeah. and then later towards World War II. Uh -huh. Then uh, uh, additional courses were introduced, including uh, uh, compounding and later uh, nursing. Uh, KMTC has grown from that level to uh, 1990 when it became a parastatal under the Ministry of Health with its own uh, semi-autonomous status of management. Uh, later on, in 2017, KMTC uh, was recategorized from PC2 to 4A meaning that it played an additional role of research. So basically, KMTC has now moved from having four students to having over 62,000 students. And uh, we have moved from just having one course to having 95 programs oh, okay. uh, in 18 departments that are now categorized in seven faculties. Mm -hmm. And um, we have now had our presence in 44 of the 47 counties mm -hmm. with 74 campuses currently. Right. Yes. And, and you, you had mentioned something interesting um, uh, that was also launched on Thursday, uh, the Innovative Foreign Language Curriculum. Tell us about that. Yes. Uh, you look at the current strategic plan of KMTC. It seeks to be a globally competitive institution in training health professionals. And for us to do that, we must develop fit for purpose uh, graduates. 
And fit for purpose graduate means that they must be able to operate in the context of the patient where that patient is. And so KMCC seeks to be a global leader in training health professionals at middle level. And that means that uh, beyond just providing the normal English uh, language training that is uh, require, required for cost, uh, countries like UK, we have established additional uh, curricula to address other markets where our trainees could then find jobs like uh, Arabic, German and French. So we uh, launched three additional curricula in those areas that I've mentioned, basically to widen the opportunities for our graduates so that they're able to work in countries other than the English speaking countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This um, then gives KMTC an opportunity to play into the international role that it seeks to compete in without having prejudice of language for our graduates. Right. And so apart from even expanding the languages that are really even taught, uh, how else is the institution really focusing on quality training? There are several things that we're doing. Number one is uh, we are ensuring that our certification of ISO 9001-2015 is actually um, revamped and that we produce graduates who are internationally recognized because we follow quality management systems. Secondly, we are putting a lot of investment on the equipment that are needed for training, like uh, simulation laboratories, skills laboratories. We are putting a lot of emphasis on our ICT infrastructure so that our students are able to learn anywhere, wherever they are, whenever they want to learn, like putting in place an e-learning platform. Mm -hmm. We're putting in place e-libraries and making sure that our students are able to learn wherever they are. We're also ensuring that uh, we have quality lecturers by first ensuring that we have adequate number of lecturers. Currently, we are processing to do uh, recruitment for additional lecturers so that we have a proper ratio between lecturers and students. This what, will, what, what ratio are you looking at? We are looking at a ratio of 1 to 10. In uh, all the 74 campuses? Yes. That means that uh, our students should get uh, world-class training that enables them to be competent at the world stage because we are now looking at not only being able to supply the local market but also the international market and some of the things that are looked at when you're looking at the international market is to have a proper ratio where students will be properly instructed not, on, not only in classrooms but in the practical areas and that requires a better ratio of lecturer to students that enables that kind of instruction to take place because uh, in the clinical setup the instructions are almost one-to-one -one, lecturer to student mm. on a case-by-case -case basis. Right. We are also looking at improving um, our infrastructure, the physical infrastructure to accommodate additional number of uh, uh, students and this is why you uh, hear the uh, CS uh, Madam Nakumecha saying that we have 21 additional campuses which we need to operationalize to allow for enough infrastructure, adequate infrastructure that allows for quality training. Is there, is there a timeline for this? Because I'm imagining some of the students uh, have seen these institutions completed but not yet operationalized. So they'll probably be wondering, they're watching us this morning, and they're wondering, uh, when are they going to be operationalized? Is there a fixed timeline, you know, saying that we will launch, uh, operationalize these institutions at this time? Yeah, we are in the process of uh, operationalizing. We have actually operationalized one in the last uh, one month. This month alone, we are also going to operationalize uh, Marsabit. Ah. We have uh, a period of one year upon which we should be able to put human resources in place, be able to put systems in place, ICT infrastructure, be able to negotiate and have MOUs with uh, training facilities, uh, be able to put um, additional equipment in place to make sure that the 21 campuses that we are looking into, taking into uh, on board, are actually 
up and running and that mm -hmm. students can then start to be admitted in those campuses. All right. And you had mentioned that uh, there are three counties yet to be uh, really have, you know, came to see, you know, institutions. Yes. And uh, I want to pick your mind on universal health coverage because you made, you know, back then, uh, I think uh, last month when you're having the whole celebrations, the universal health coverage, and this strategic plan, you know, is aligned to universal health coverage. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, I mean, with your expertise, mm -hmm. and even as a CEO mm -hmm. of KMTC, what are your thoughts of universal health coverage in Kenya? Okay, my thoughts are this, that uh, basically the, the definition of universal health coverage means that all people are accessing quality health care wherever, whenever they are, without suffering catastrophic financial challenges. And that basically means that uh, healthcare should be accessible in quantities, quality, and um, the spectrum that can assure the public of um, quality in terms of being able to access and be able to be informed about their health. And it covers the whole spectrum from promotional uh, services, rehabilitative services, curative services, including palliative mm -hmm. care. KMTC is well placed as uh, the main trainer for the Ministry of Health, providing over 85% of human resources in the health sector to be able to provide the quality human resources that are required to make sure that the UHC works. How do we do this? We have courses that are aligned to primary health care. These courses include community health promoters course, which is a short course. We also have courses in nutrition, we have health promotion, we have um, courses that enable health provision at community level, that then enables uh, uh, our citizens to be informed about their health, to take informed choices about their health, and be able to seek further health uh, care um, attention at higher levels where it is needed. All right. I'm taking a look at the theme for the whole strategic plan. It's quite mouthful, by the way, quite a long one. Advancing health professions, education through transformative training, research, and collaboration. If, uh, however, the fact that it's mouthful, but then it really speaks largely on even what you're you know, talking about. Mm -hmm. Three keywords here, training, research, and collaboration. You're really you know, uh, discussing matters, the whole training, mm -hmm. and how KMTC has been doing it since 1927 till now, and how it, it really is focusing on you know, how it, it will do it. Mm -hmm. uh, speak on even research. Mm -hmm. uh, how is KMTC really big on research? Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember last month, public uh, health peers, Mary Muldoni, talking about the government you know, uh, is going to support academic institutions when it comes to the research and even encouraging to come up with you know, programs and initiate research programs. Are there any research programs that KMTC is undertaking at the, at the moment? Yeah, the, the KMTC is geared towards enabling uh, our faculty and students to conduct quality research and be able to come up with the findings that then inform policy, inform, extend the boundaries of knowledge and inform practice. Uh, KMTC has developed policies that uh, enable uh, its staff and students to engage in research. Secondly, um, we have developed elaborate uh, programs to ensure that uh, our staff are capacity built on conducting operational research and research that is uh, geared towards enabling KMTC to provide quality training like enhancing our curricula. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, KMTC collaborates very well with other institutions to ensure that we infuse our research agenda with the national agenda for development. Uh, fourth, we encourage our students. No student graduates without uh, handing in a research uh, work. And that research work should gear towards originality, being able to make our students lifelong learners. And uh, currently, as an institution, we uh, ensure that there are biannual conferences where research findings are then discussed and these findings then find their way in practice and in um, policy. Mm -hmm. 
we also uh, are having an, a journal uh, that is internal to KMTC that speaks to the research uh, uh, agenda of KMTC, being able to publish uh, research findings. And also now, right now we are looking at scaling up how many we can have in terms of faculty being able to do research, conduct research, and be able to collaborate in research to ensure that uh, we are able to address the research questions that affect the health sector, including human resources for health. Right. But, but uh, Dr. Reddy, and I'm curious because, uh, for example, mm -hmm. in all the 74 uh, campuses, uh, even the thousands of students here, if each of them provides a research in the paper and, and all this, and uh, really gears and uh, up for probably a research project. Mm -hmm. So where does uh, this particular research, now at the end of the day, its mm -hmm. final product, mm -hmm. do we get to see the final product of some of these researches that are really brewed up in the institutions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number one, we make sure that we have a proper repository for all researches that are done in KMTC. Secondly, uh, we encourage publishing of research findings and therefore it means that uh, there is discourse, uh, intellectual discourse about uh, our research findings. Thirdly, we encourage our lecturers and students to participate in conferences that enable them then to present their findings. We encourage students in groups to um, attend conferences and therefore also be able to present innovative uh, findings of their research in those conferences, uh, especially technology-driven kind of uh, researches that mm -hmm. then enable proper diagnosis, access to diagnostic uh, services, access to primary health care. And so we, partic we develop a collaborative approach in research, enabling our students to start being inquisitive, being lifelong learners, and basically enabling them to understand that uh, research is an integral part of the intellectual discourse. All right. Yeah. And, and, and yesterday, I mean, we were uh, planting, or some would say, growing trees, and I'm curious. Mm -hmm. uh, how does KMTC really uh, focus largely on environmental sustainability? Yeah. We have a key result area um, that is uh, sustainable, institutional sustainability. That then part of that uh, result area is looking at environmental sustainability. KMTC this year alone uh, has a target of planting 65,000 trees. Oh. And I'm happy that uh, yesterday in the national uh, tree growing exercise, mm -hmm. all KMTCs uh, participated to plant trees in uh, all the areas that uh, had been chosen for tree planting. Myself uh, and a group of uh, board directors and management were in West Pocot to ensure that we participate with the community and county government to plant trees in that area. Secondly, KMTC looks at um, environmental cleanliness. We have days when our students participate in community cleaning to ensure that uh, we have a clean environment. Uh, thirdly, we have ensured that um, we are responsive in use of paper, for example, printing on both sides of the paper, and also ensuring that uh, as an institution, we make our learners aware of their roles in ensuring that we have a sustainable environment that we can then hand over to the next generations. We also ensure that uh, we have in our new uh, strategic plan, um, energy uh, saving approaches to um, our institution like putting solar lighting street lights solar lighting systems to reduce on our consumption of electricity and also have certain other innovative ways like biodigesters where we do not have sewer systems in place that then enable us to use uh, uh, waste in a responsive way we also have a way of uh, looking at um, safe disposal of harmful waste and we also train our students on the same and how to be responsible citizens and the fact that they have to, they have a duty to make sure that they sustain an environment that is conducive for learning and also for living in the communities where we are. Right. And speak of matters even sustaining, uh, 2028 is, uh, well it looks like 
quite a far uh, away moment, but then it might really be just here. And I'm curious, even as CEO, yeah. uh, how do you really foresee from 2023 all the way to 2028, what are you foreseeing all the way? Even speaking largely on matters, even the digital kind of transformation that uh, KMTC really has to have. I'm foreseeing a transformed institution, an institution that is addressing the global agenda when it comes to human resources for health, an institution that is capable of providing local uh, solutions to human resource needs for the country, being able to provide adequate, well-trained human resources for the country and countries, other countries that require human resources. I'm looking at an institution that is efficient and effective in a way, in the way it uses its, its resources to address global challenges. I'm looking at an institution that is digitally accomplished, being able to use digital technology to advance its agenda. I'm looking at an institution that is globally competitive. I'm looking at an institution that is capable of taking on the best institutions in the world in human resources for health training. Right. And Dictary, some students from KMTC and some would even like to join. And even the parents are you know, curious. I mean, so far you've really quite a huge number of students. But then even moving on, you'd really want to uh, even involve others. You talk about 21 operationalize them. Um, uh, are these students going to be supported? How do you really you know, undergo all that? We have uh, financial support for our students. KMTC is one of those institutions that operates an internal fund that uh, then it partners with HELB to ensure that it uh, issues these funds to needy students in a responsive way that enables the most needy students to access financing and then later on when they're able to uh, get employment, they're able to pay back this. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we have uh, mentorship programs for our students. And uh, thirdly, we have uh, student centers that enable them to have a conversation that is uh, conducive to their well-being. We also engage our students in uh, sports activities and extracurricular activities. We plan to make sure that, for example, we have a state-of-the-art uh, sports facilities within the next five years to make sure that our students' uh, health is taken care of beyond classroom setup. Right. We also take care of their mental health by ensuring that we have counselors in our campuses. All right. And, uh, okay, uh, before you even get your final remarks, allow me to put you on the spot here, Dr. Terry. Um, uh, in Vihiga campus, uh, because, I mean, you're really the right person as the CEO to really uh, talk about some of these issues when it comes to political goodwill. In Vihiga campus, Vihiga campus had closed for three academic years. You're aware of that, before it was opened uh, last year. And this really had to do largely with the, the, the whole you know, political kind of scaffolds in that particular area. I'm curious when you're taking a look at the strategic plan for 2023 all the way to 2028, how do you foresee maneuverings of this? Uh, is there political goodwill, even when you're really working with some of these campuses and the you know, leaders around here? Okay, uh, first let me correct that uh, Vihiga campus was not closed. Mm -hmm. It's been operational all through. What happened was that we reduced the number of students in certain courses to first ensure that we meet quality in terms of infrastructure. And uh, I can tell you that uh, Vihiga right now has a lot of goodwill for KMTC. Uh, myself and the board of directors of KMTC have consistently involved the governor for Vihiga, including the stakeholders in Vihiga. And currently, uh, one of the key challenges that Vihiga was facing was the issue of uh, uh, infrastructure for training and in response to that we have had uh, a collaborative effort to have additional facilities at Kegondi and Iduku okay. that will support learning in Vihiga. Uh, we have also ensured that we have health trainers in that place that are able to take care of students. Right. So we have also collaborated with the county to ensure that we have facilities, health facilities that can then take care of training and we are hoping that with the current uh, recruitment of um, lecturers, we will be able to provide even more courses in Vihiga and revamp the training in Vihiga so that uh, students are able to access training in that uh, part of the country. 
So basically, there is a f uh, brighter future, not only even in Vihiga, but you know, across uh, the country. Definitely. Um, give me your last, you know, thoughts. Uh, now till 2028, um, uh, what should we really be expecting from K KMTC? Okay, number one, expect quality trained graduates. Expect competent, uh, fit for purpose graduates who are able to work in any environment because we will give them additional capabilities in terms of languages, in terms of competence, and in terms of ability to be digital natives. Secondly, expect a digitally transformed institution which utilizes uh, the digital platforms to increase efficiency and effectiveness of its right. courses. Thirdly, expect an institution that is capable of conducting research, uh, being innovative, and being, um, uh, being able to conduct uh, consultancy services. Right. And fourth, expect an institution that is sustainable in terms of financial uh, management, in terms of environmental sustainability, okay. in the way in which we collaborate with our stakeholders, and expect an institution that is capable of um, competing in the world platform. Right. As Sante Sana, Dr. Kelly Luoch, the CEO of uh, KMTC. Sante Sana, and most definitely look out for that. But another thing to look out for, even as uh, we really um, uh, ease up this particular Tuesday morning, when it comes to matters of yoga, just to relax yourself, probably you in the house, look for some space because you're about to get to do that. Flora Lemuki, as well as Yvonne, about to get into some yoga exercise. If you're in the office, don't worry. Tell the boss, give me some space in the office just to also uh, relax. Uh, they'll be coming up after this tiny short break, so don't go too far. This short break is for you to look for some uh, fitness wear, for you to change and get into some yoga moments. We'll be right back.